abuse in a hospital for vulnerable adults. I've already told you before, I'm poison. My name's Olivia Davis, and I've been undercover as a care worker. I am feeling a bit nervous about it, actually. I'm living a completely different life. <laughs> I'm being so funny. I see staff who couldn't care less. Suicide scream, mate. I just want to kill it. That was the monster. <laughs> Patients mocked and intimidated. Watch me and see what happens. I'll come through the floor. I'm regularly restrained. I had three restraints in the space of five minutes. It was manic. I think it is like psychological torture. It shouldn't be like this. Eight years ago, Panorama exposed terrible abuse at another hospital for vulnerable adults. I mean, anyone who watched the television program on Winterbourne View, like me, would have been absolutely shocked. We were promised the mistreatment of patients would never happen again. That promise is being broken. <laughs> I wish I could look after her myself. God. Sorry. It was supposed to have been stopped, and our children were supposed to be safe. <laughs> This is Walton Hall Hospital in County Durham. In the last three years, there have been repeated complaints about conditions here. But whistleblowers tell me nothing's changed and patients are still at risk. They say they're worried about some staff abusing patients. So I'm going to investigate and get a job as a care worker. This is really it. I've prepped as much as I can. I think I am almost relieved that this moment's come. Hello. Good morning, you all right? You all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Walton Hall is NHS funded and privately run. It promises therapeutic care for around a dozen adults with learning disabilities or autism. Are you there, Olivia? Yeah. I'm not on the right. New starters earn £16,300 a year. Number nine. Plus four, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. The patient's behaviour can be challenging. Ah! Hey, 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 hey. I don't need my meds. You do. <laughs> Most are admitted to Walton Hall because previous care or hospital placements couldn't manage their complex needs. No one gives a flying fuck about anyone anymore. They shouldn't stay long, but many have been here months, and in some cases, years. Hello. Staff outnumber patients. Up to 27 care workers during daytime shifts. And Olivia Shadowin along with two nurses and two managers most days. Thank you very much. Is it in? I see some staff trying their best to care for patients. Well, are you safe enough to go out? Yes. Yeah. Are you laughing now? You're laughing now. I'm going to go see us outside. But it's not long before I'm concerned about others. It's 7.30 on a Sunday morning, as staff are about to go on shift. <laughs> a patient who's been woken by the noise starts shouting from an upstairs room. Can you shout a bit louder, can't 
It's like the House of Commons, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> House of Mons. Mate, it would MP there, wouldn't it? Mate, it would fucking tart it. <laughs> unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. It's really shocking language. I show my footage to Professors Glynis Murphy and Andrew MacDonald, two of England's most respected experts on learning disabilities, autism and challenging behaviour. I think if I was a patient there, I would think there was a bit of a conspiracy going on between the staff, the way they're standing out here smoking before they start work and laughing at us. Yeah. You know, I'd feel conspired against. Yeah, and scared. It's obviously a very deviant culture. This care worker's called Niall. He's talking about a patient. See that tiny, tiny car? I can see it. Guess whose car it is? Who? Oh. Mine. <laughs> this is the patient Niall's been rude about. Her name's Alex. Uh, can you sit in front of me, please, Olivia? Yep, I will. Alex is 20. She was admitted to Walton Hall 10 months ago after her previous placement broke down. She's been sectioned under the Mental Health Act. It means she can't leave. You're going to stay. You are detained under Section 3. Alex lives on the second floor of the hospital, along with the other female patients. She rarely leaves her room. She really spends 90% of her day in her bedroom. Should I open the curtains? Her days are literally spent just on her phone, sitting on her bed. Her care plan says she prefers to be looked after by women. <laughs> She's scared of men. Stop. I've got a bang in here. That's <laughs> been I need a plug because I've got bad ears. And... My colleague calls for assistance. Hello. Two male care workers, Matthew and Peter, arrive. Immediately, the men make their presence felt. But she carried on screaming. What we'll do is me and Matthew will sit here and you two can go. Did you hear that? No. Then they send me and my female colleague away. Left alone with the men, she becomes even more distressed. Do you want a jacket? <laughs> Do you want a bike jacket? <laughs> At the end of the corridor, more than 10 meters away, I can still hear her screams. She not like two men on her obs? No. Alex's parents, Tony and Sarah, agree to watch my footage. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel so upset that Alex has had to put up with that. We don't know anything about any of this. Because she wouldn't tell us. They're meant to be working to get Alex better to move out of that environment and they're, and they're making it worse. Alex's parents also agree their daughter's face should be shown. She was diagnosed with autism as a toddler. By the time Alex was a teenager, her parents needed help caring for her. This was at a photo shoot. I think it was her 16th birthday. She's beautiful, isn't she? She is beautiful. OK, now She's clever, she's funny, she's happy most of the time, unless something's gone wrong and it's upset her or she's seen or heard something that upsets her. Put no, 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 put no,
put your lap lap lamp Did you hear what I said? You heard what I said? So the girls will come back? Yeah. So you're going to be quiet now? Yeah. Because we'll just come back. Yeah. When we return to Alex's room, Matthew and Peter are inside. That's how quiet is it? She just doesn't like male members of staff looking after her. They know that. <laughs> they want to make sure Alex can't see us. It was total intimidation. That was exactly what it was. It was intimidation to make her stop because they're two big grown men. It would just cause her to act out even more. Do you want women back? It was massively distressing for the patient, massively distressing. Matthew's now sat outside, while Peter's still in her room. Alex, do you want the women back? Yes or no? He's taunting her. It's playing some extremely cruel mind game with her. For me, it's all about control. And you can see that someone is distressed. You need training or specialist skills to know that somebody's really scared. Then I hear this. Slapping yourself. Oh, that's Peter snapping balloons. Ah, you're joking. In her room. She, she doesn't hate balloons. balloons. She hates balloons. She won't have balloons anywhere that near her in case they bang. Balloons will make her worse. If they if they anything to do with balloons, she hates. It's just disgusting. Alex, do you have balloons? Peter tells me later he discovered her reaction to balloons by chance. And the balloon one was just came off on the screen. Oh. And I picks a balloon and she starts pissing about with it. She says, no. Oh. And stop screaming. What's that? I don't like balloons. She just doesn't like them. She started flicking it like that. But I wasn't even on purpose. <gasps> he knows. He knows. He knows that she don't like not balloons. balloons. They've done it on purpose to wind her up, to make her angry and upset for their own entertainment. And the look on his face. Does he have a balloon? The red one? For Alex, the ordeal isn't over. Alex, what? look, if we can't listen, here's Niall, and Niall's going to stay as well now, unless you calm down. So now you've got three men. Then the conversation in the corridor just outside Alex's room takes an unexpected turn. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Lesbian for one day. Yeah, yeah. I'm a lesbian. Yeah. Sexually explicit language within earshot of the patient. <laughs> it would not even change, really. Yeah. It'd, it'd be normal, really, because you get them to taste my juices rather than the roll. I could taste each other's. That's what I mean. Did you, did you get like a mirror in like a spread of it and look like a cash and all that? Yeah. yeah. I take pause and maybe sit on the line. I think that's appropriate talk in front of my daughter. It's a hospital. They're supposed to be working and they're supposed to be looking after hospital patients. This is Claire. We're not showing her face. She has mild learning disabilities and has been here for more than a year. She's really young. She's got a wicked personality. All right. Guess what I'm watching later. A what? Instant family again. You're going again. She has good days and bad days. This morning starts well. I haven't even brushed my hair this morning and it doesn't look that bad. And it's good. But within less than an hour, her mood's gone downhill. Do you want PR or not? Do you want PRN or not? Yes. I want everyone to fucking leave me alone! Because that's going to happen. PRN means medication when required. 
Care worker Saba wants to know if Claire needs medicine to help calm her down. Is that a yes or a no? I need a straight out. One of the staff members is literally like yelling at her, yes or no, do you want it, yes or no? Tell me, yes or no? I don't fucking know! And she's like, I don't know, I don't know. So upset. And I want to fucking go out by myself. Oh. Well, that can't happen. Instead of calming the situation, Saba makes it worse. If this is about your family, I've already told you before, you're fucking poison. I'm fucking sick of shit. Shut the fuck up! She's just being a dick. Who on earth does she think she's speaking to? Yeah, I, it's totally inappropriate. Totally, totally wrong. This person's clearly melting down. Yeah, they're not seeing that. The, the lack of empathy here, the lack of compassion. You wouldn't speak to a dog like that. I mean, you just wouldn't. Anne Early knows all about the mistreatment of vulnerable adults. Hello, how are you? Come on in. Her son Simon was abused at Winterbourne View Hospital. <laughs> the scandal was exposed by Panorama eight years ago. Simon was a very different person when he came home. That's taken me some years to try to adjust to that. And that's a very hard thing to understand, I think, the long-term effect. Winterbourne View was shut down. The government promised other specialist hospitals would be too, saying care should be provided closer to patients' homes instead. But most still remain open. Is this is about your family? It's really hard to see. Sorry, it's... It's taken me back a long time. It shouldn't still be happening. It was supposed to have been stopped. And our children were supposed to be safe. Winterbourne View and Walton Hall have more in common than the mistreatment of patients. They used to be owned by the same company, Castleback. Following the Winterbourne View scandal, a company called Danshell bought what was left of Castleback, including Walton Hall. I can't believe that anybody having bought somewhere that had the reputation that Castleback and Winterbourne View had would not try so desperately to disassociate themselves from the name to make the whole thing better. And, and they clearly have no interest in doing that at all. Oh, Claire's having another bad day. Would you like a pillow or anything? Would you have me to do a display with the teddies? I'm with care worker Ryan, who's my mentor. When I pass him one of Claire's teddies, I'm shocked by what he does next. If you had to pick one of the teddies to be the bedroom, which one would it be? Hello. Stop it! Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little red bearer. Eh? <laughs> He's getting all the enjoyment there. Three days later, Claire's unsettled again. She's in her room. This one's Toby. No, Maggie! Maggie, that's me. Oh, the lights have a three-way. Ryan, who's lying on the bed with Claire, is with another care worker called Wacker. 
This is my story. Then it'll come the other way. There you go. This one. <laughs> They may be trying to show off to me, but I've not encouraged them. Shut up, Waka! Shut up, Waka! You want a blanket? Yeah? You want a blanket? I want to fucking get out of this hospital. You're working around vulnerable people, and you're talking such explicit, disgusting stuff. It makes me feel really uncomfortable. She's called you. It's unbelievable. It's so inappropriate. I can't believe I just saw it. Really shocking. I'm almost genuinely at a loss for words. Yeah. Placing objects in sexualised positions, everything about this suggests that they're there for their own entertainment at work. It's almost like she's irrelevant in this. During my time at Walton Hall, Alex, the patient who doesn't like men, becomes a regular target for some staff. What's going on? When Matthew's on shift, he often finds a reason to come to Alex's room. No. Bring him up just in case I have to respond. I'm going to stay here. Yeah. Right? Jim's having a bed and comes to his little back there. Alright? <gasps> Will Decker. He's actually threatening her. Matthew! I'm, I'm okay. not talking to you until you've calmed down. Can you just go downstairs and tell Karen that she wants three men tonight now? That's not me. Me that four men. Matthew knows Alex doesn't like men, but he's pretending that more are on the way. So did you make it five men? No. Oh. Then later. Is that five men? No. I think it might be. Yeah, make that five men, please. And again. Six men now, please. We can keep going. They even have a name for what they're doing. They call it pressing the man button. Telling Alex if she doesn't keep quiet, her room will be inundated with men. Yeah, it was me who invented the man button. <laughs> the man button. It's like men. So if I press this button, all the men will turn up and you don't want that, do you? No. The man button. <laughs> Sickens me, absolutely sickens me. Tell Karen that she wants three men tonight. I'm speechless. Like, why? It's not only non therapeutic, it's anti therapeutic. They're entertaining themselves in this nasty way. It's like torture. I think it is like psychological torture because she's stuck there, she can't actually get away. It's a secure unit, and they are deliberately taunting her, deliberately upsetting her. I would agree with Professor Murphy. That's torture. That's adding something to a situation to visibly cause distress to another human being. Mm. After about a month at Walton Hall, I see little in the way of care and compassion for any of the patients, and I worry for them. They just don't have the voice or the power to be able to say, look, I'm suffering living here. Because they don't have that voice, they will continue to live the way that they are. Not even their family members really see the real picture of, of how they're living on a daily basis. I mean, visitors come in and everyone's on their best behavior. Alex's family make the 320-mile round trip to see her as often as they can. 
Do you need a plate and a cup for your food, or do you just want it in the bag? Uh, plate and cup, please. Today it's just her mum. It's all smiles to her face. Coffee too sweet. Is it coffee too sweet. I'll make it. But behind her back, just downstairs, a care worker called John tells a different story. I was a little cop upstairs, still screaming on. I was having work with a mate. As soon as I started screaming, I'd go, kill her. Get on her. Oh, God, I can't. I said, Sue's, man. Hey? She goes, Sue's. I don't even have to see her work, she wants to kill us. I'll rip you off, fucking dry. If I come to you, I'll fucking drop you. I just feel betrayed by a lot of them. So they were presenting to us that they, they cared and they didn't. Like Alex, almost all of the patients at Walton Hall are miles away from their families. Sometimes we couldn't get to see us for, say, once a fortnight. So We used to go once a fortnight because we both worked full time. And on the odd occasion that we couldn't go, I just used to sit here, you know, so upset because I couldn't go to see her. Yeah, absolutely, that's fine. I think it's one of the big challenges that we face. It can be partly because you're geographically further away, and that's a factor, but it's also the lack of people entering this place. If it feels more like Piccadilly Circus and that people are watching you, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. At the time of the Winterbourne View scandal, there were 3,400 patients in specialist hospitals. When the government failed to deliver on its promise to transform care for vulnerable patients, Sir Stephen Burb was asked by the NHS to find out what had gone wrong. The government said they would move people out of similar institutions within two years. Two years came and went, and what happened was that there were more people going into such institutions than were coming out. So it was a blatantly broken promise, and I think there was huge embarrassment and shock at that. So Stephen was asked to come up with a plan to put things right. I recommended that the government institute a closure programme immediately. I said they needed to change legislation to introduce a Charter of Rights. Um, because I think we need to empower people, families, to challenge the system. And I said they needed to appoint an independent commissioner for people with learning disabilities who would investigate abuses and do something about them. Was that enacted? No. No. In fact, four years on from the publication of my report, uh, we are still basically in the same position. Since Winterbourne View, bed numbers have been reduced, but there are still almost 2,300 vulnerable patients in specialist hospitals. I always felt that when I was doing my review, there would be other Winterbourne-type scandals. There will continue to be such scandals whilst we have these institutions. Will you photograph here again? Yeah. I don't think you photograph. Paul, not his real name, is in his 50s. His sister lives more than 40 miles away. It's not me. It's from my, 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 my uh, sister. He has learning disabilities and has been at Walton Hall for six months. He spends a lot of time just hanging around. Excuse me, please. I need to get through here. You're blocking the way. Thank you. You're in the way, He too is a target for some staff. Fucking fat penguin he is, isn't he? Fucking shuffling about. Are we friends now, yeah? What? He's a patient that is the target of a lot of mocking. He gets quite irate sometimes. They know his trigger words. He has certain trigger words that set him off. That doctor told me was diabetic. I'm not sugar in his tea. I'm not diabetic. I'm not. Five o'clock in the morning. Today, Paul's being discussed at a staff meeting led by one of the nurses, Karen. He phoned the police. Started saying about me being hit and everything like that. But they did come here just to have a look around. But nothing's going on. 
I don't know if Paul was hit or not. And then he rang the police at five o'clock yesterday morning. Didn't he? Did he? I said somebody had punched him and fucking all oh, this crap. That's just wishful thinking, isn't it? <laughs> the day after Paul called the police, care workers John and James are looking after him. When I heard these two particular staff members were going to be working with this patient, kind of pricked my ears up because I knew that something might not go so right with them. So I went into the room. Right. Come on, stop it, please. Come on, ignore. This is Paul's private lounge. I'm just going to shut your windows. John goes into his bedroom next door. No, he said. Did he do it? Yeah. When yeah. he comes out, he, he starts whispering to James. Sure He's done something because Paul's reacting, but I don't know what. You what? Bring him in, do it. Yeah? Bring him in, do it. You punch like a woman. Get in there. Punch me and see what happens. I'll put you through the floor. Then it becomes clear what John's been up to. He's taken down one of the patient's posters. I've done nothing. You've just seen this or shut your windows, man. The only reason that he was reacting and shouting is because you're antagonizing him. You're standing there, you're making fun of him. <laughs> this lot definitely should not be working in care. They are the absolute antithesis of what care workers should be. Then, having upset the patient, John squares up to him. Let's dance. You're all being big man bullying people. Eh? Can't go to the club. You get one shot, one shot, one shot on my own man. So. Newcastle? Yeah. Right, I'll just want that upstairs. I'll leave bugger loads alone. Oh, fuck off. Here you are. You're going to make us fuck off, like? I can't imagine how that must feel. Sniping, doing things that they know upset him. How do you deal with that? With someone with a learning disability? They just don't have that many tools in the box to fight back. It's hard to watch. We're not standing in here. Oh. Are you really gonna do that? Are you really gonna do that? Too fast for you. Paul's in the main hallway, hanging around again. Today, he's being looked after by Niall. Niall wants Paul to go to the lounge or his bedroom, but Paul doesn't want to go. Paul's getting more upset. And takes a swipe at Niall. Next thing Paul knows, he's on the ground, being restrained. Patients should only be restrained if there's no other way of stopping them hurting themselves or others. I am really struggling to see why they even restrained him. They have a thing about control, and that's clear. More staff arrive, including Ryan, my mentor, and Karen, the nurse. Six staff in total, all holding Paul, or stood watching. Ryan's now holding Paul's head between his knees, leaving his hands free. What is he learning? He's learning that people taunt you, provoke you, treat you like a piece of meat. They're behaving as though he isn't even there, have a piece of chewing gum. Yeah. Some poor guy being restrained on the floor and doesn't quite understand what's going on or why it's happening, I would imagine. Paul's been held on the floor for nearly three minutes now. Then Ryan has an idea. Karen, if he's this aggressive, you think everything in the room might be a bit of a rush and yeah. pull everything out? Yeah. 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 Well, I'll never show up, that's a good idea. Shall we? 
A care worker called Sarah, who's been watching, is sent to his room. I can't hear what Paul's shouting as we go upstairs, but he's upset. CD player MP3, all this goes. Oh, got there you go. Clock, clock Sarah wants to make sure Paul knows what she's doing. All right. Well, okay, these what happened with them? What, so he can see them? Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. It's just so cruel because it's clearly being used as a punishment. You refuse to get out of the hall when we ask you. We'll restrain you. We'll take everything out of your room and we'll show you we've done it. It's another kind of control strategy. You're not getting your things back just yet, mister. Absolutely no chance. You have to earn them back off. You're not doing this. No chance. You've been doing Ryan's still got Paul's head between his knees, and now he's wearing the patient's glasses. Give me a dog. This is what we Right, are you ready to get up to go up to your room? So you're not having your stuff back yet. Yeah? The restraint on Paul lasts for nearly 10 minutes. <laughs> Professor McDonnell develops training aimed at limiting the use of restraint or avoiding it altogether. Restraint should be momentary, it should be short, it should be with as fewer staff as possible, without an audience. If there's no immediate risk of harm, you back off. You're talking a threshold of a minute or two, then let go. During the two months I work at Walton Hall, there are days I don't see any restraints. Oh. On others, it's unrelenting. I had three restraints in the space of five minutes, and and um, it was manic. It was chaos. It started in the dining room with Claire. It's not your fault. Let it off. At the same time, there's another incident outside. I mean, stop. By the time I get there, the patient's already being held on the ground. I'm then sent back to the dining room, where Claire is still being restrained. Get off me! Fuck it, do you to get the fuck off me! You know what? Why can't you get up yet until you settle? All right. You know. We actually held her for 32 minutes. God, that's a very long time. Another day, and Paul's on the floor again. When you're hitting people, you're staying at one car. No, I'm not! I'm not going to get anymore, right? <laughs> Claire's being restrained again, too. She's being pinned to the ground. Get off me! I just think that's one, appalling. Two, three, four, five, six members of staff there. These are dangerous, dangerous methods. That's totally unnecessary. Panorama has discovered that in the two years to 2018, the number of physical restraints in specialist hospitals like Walton Hall almost doubled to more than 21,000. It should be going the other way. That's certainly my thoughts. And when you give uh, staff teams good training, it does go the other way. I suspect that it's just poor training and maybe even poor staff selection. I'm looking after Alex again, this time with Sarah. She's an experienced care worker. If you get unsettled, mind, I am sitting back there. Do you okay. understand? Yeah. Alex has a number of ways to keep herself calm. One is to say a word and have staff repeat it back. Olivia. Yes. Good. Good. 
you do answer Alex back, she's okay because you. you she'll say things she needs you to 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 say it back to her. Just reassures her. It reassures her that she's getting your attention. We're being good, aren't we? Yeah. Right. White noise on them. Instead of repeating words for Alex, Sarah tells her to listen to white noise through her headphones. Sarah, what? It can also calm her, but not today. Listen! Alex, yes, what would you like? Go sit down on your bed. I am doing your notes. Back off. Is this is right, oh, oh, is is this is Go sit down. Right, go sit down. Alex starts hitting herself. <sighs> go sit down. Go sit down. It's not hard. <sighs> She's getting distressed. Sit down. You're not settled, so you won't be doing your tea at this moment in time. <laughs> right, well done. Well done, you. She's not helping her in the slightest. She's just making her worse by not responding to her, not doing those simple things that Alex needs. She's she's sending her into meltdown. Ryan! Are you set? That's me, Ned. Ryan arrives. He tries to calm Alex. It doesn't work. Sarah tells Alex again to listen to white noise. But by now, it's too late for that. Sit down. <laughs> then, in her distress, she lunges at me. Sarah and Ryan rush at her and take her to ground. <laughs> the restraint lasts for almost 13 minutes. I just don't want to ever leave her with anybody again. I wish I could look after her myself. God. Sorry. <laughs> I just find it really upsetting watching it. Because they taunted her. They refused to do things that they know keep her calm. They watched her get more and more upset. How avoidable do you think that was? Totally avoidable. Totally avoidable. It's just tragic. Where are you in it? The beginning. Oh. Every time a patient is restrained, staff must write up a record of what happened. Due to increased risk, Mabo. Yeah. Mabo is the name given to the only restraint technique authorised for use at Walton Hall. This was my training. We're going to take these arms out and we're going to hook them up over the shoulders. By writing Mabo, Sarah is saying Alex was restrained using hospital approved techniques. Okay, and then just a mind. Did so? Ready to go? But that's a world away from what really happened. Who is going to believe her? If she walked up to me right now and said, the staff provoked me, the staff pushed me onto the ground, who'd believe her? Their managers should be looking at these notes and they should be saying, that is not an adequate record. But at Walton Hall, management appear to think approved techniques don't work. This is the deputy manager, Steve, talking to staff a week before the restraint on Alex. First few physical interventions, it's very different from your mere war course 
Well, maybe I'll say it's very out where they're standing like this and they're waiting, and if everyone's doing it like once, so let's all go down. Unfortunately, our patients don't do the main walk course. They grab them, they punch them, they spit and they stamp and they twist and they turn in. So he tells staff it's okay to say approved techniques have been used when they haven't. But it's not the same, but it doesn't mean we have to like document it or anything different. So Mabo applied the start time. If all you're writing is Mabo applied, nobody's any of the wiser. For a manager to say that, he's basically giving the message to his staff, it's open season on the clients, you can do what you want. Before I started work at Walton Hall, whistleblowers told me some staff physically abuse patients. After a few weeks in the job, some of my colleagues begin to confide in me. It's taken so long to really gain their trust and for them to feel that they can share information with me and have them believe that I'm somebody that is not a snake. I'm not going to grasp on them, I'm not going to snitch on them. I hear about a patient being hurt by a care worker Wacker. I ask him about it. As soon as the second end was arriving my neck, I'm like, Are you break down, baby. He says he floored the patient. As soon as the second end, head first, bang, she be <laughs> This care worker says he saw it happen. Man, she got you crap hold off me, baby. Uh, <laughs> Twice. Yeah. We don't play with these guys. I know, man. Bang! What are you doing? Bang! Again! I said, Waka, Waka. Wait, bang! Again! <laughs> I said, Waka, that's enough, man. Why? Do you see Waka get punched? Man? You see me get punched? What? Oh, this, this, is... these people. <laughs> this is God's say what we do to them. We're just going to try to grab them. I'll take them. And they're not the only ones beginning to open up. This care worker, called Darren, says he felled a patient using his outstretched arm. Six care workers tell me they've deliberately hurt patients. Danshell, the company that took over Walton Hall in the wake of the Winterbourne View scandal, was bought last year by Signet, one of the country's biggest learning disabilities and mental health care providers. While I'm there, I'm told Signet has plans to introduce CCTV cameras. When are they coming in? All right. He says the new owners and the regulator, the Care Quality Commission, or CQC, will be doing regular checks. You're going to be coming in. You look at the footage and the cameras and make sure everyone's well, on the job right. It's the talk of Walton Hall. Uh, good old days of the gun shop and these fucking places full of cameras, aren't they? Alright. So you won't be able to scare you. <laughs> okay, alright. Staff are told the new cameras will be installed everywhere in the hospital, except patients' bedrooms. It will change the way we handle them on the corridors. Yeah, but it's not in their bedrooms. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it'll be... We're probably going to get the shit kicked out of us on the corridors more. But once they're upstairs, I'll be yeah, for some piercing to get done, like, Definitely. Which depends how CQ, yeah, CQC are. They crack down on a lot, we'll be fucked. But care worker Niall says cameras won't stop staff hurting patients, even on the corridors. We're on the How? Right. He says there'll be blind spots during restraints. He held my arm and he used my his thumb and he pushed like the very, very edge of my skin against the wall with the rest of my arm. Yeah. They still got a bit of skin underneath. Ow! Uh, 
Oh my god, it really hurt. So it looks like I'm coming around like you can fuck all about. He's not the only care worker who describes how to hurt patients on the sly. Then he too gives me a demonstration. Just passed on the shoulder. I mean, they're a very vindictive, nasty bunch. Yeah. You can put a lot of precautionary procedures in, but it still requires people to monitor. So you can take thousands of CCTV footage hours, but there better be someone who's checking that stuff. For laughing at Alex again. But things look set to change. Alex has got a short on. I know. Wow. She does look very pretty. New clothes. Managers are worried about the number of incidents involving Alex when men are around. So they've told staff she must now only be cared for by women. Is that the rule now that we have to have just females here? But when Alex is upset again, Matthew, who's just responded to her emergency alarm, hangs around outside her room. Do you like balloons? Sorry. <laughs> Do you like balloons? Sorry. She's saying sorry. So nothing changed, they just carried on as it was. I'm devastated for her. I, I am. It's night time. After two months working shifts undercover at Walton Hall, what? it's time for me to leave. There is nothing therapeutic about that hospital. She's just being a dick. It must be horrible, day in, day out, to live like that. And I can't see how that place is making any of those patients feel any more positive about their futures. It's just absolutely pitiful. It really is just a bleak place. It can cost the NHS several thousand pounds per week per patient for specialist care in hospitals like Walton Hall. The money is there, it's just being spent in the wrong way. It needs to be spent on good community facilities, not on abusive institutions. Since providing Signet, the owners of Walton Hall, with details of my evidence, 16 permanent members of staff have been suspended and a police investigation has begun. Signet told us it's shocked and deeply saddened by the allegations against staff at Walton Hall, which it recently acquired, and is cooperating fully with the police. It says the safety and care of patients is of paramount importance, and it has zero tolerance of unprofessional conduct towards them. It says it's transferring all patients to other hospitals and is absolutely committed to providing the highest quality health care. Of the staff members we wrote to, only Niall responded to our allegations, saying he categorically denies any criminal wrongdoing. Mabo, the company whose restraint techniques are used at Walton Hall, says its methods and training are delivered successfully in many highly respected organisations. Before I went undercover, Walton Hall had been rated good by the regulator in England, the Care Quality Commission, following an inspection in 2017. What would you say to the families of loved ones who've been at this hospital and been mistreated, a hospital that you've rated good? 
On this occasion, uh, it's quite clear that we did not pick up the abuse that was happening at Wharton Hall, and all I can do is to uh, apologise deeply for the, to the people concerned. The regulator says it had since warned the hospital about staff training, long hours and excessive use of agency staff, but under the rules at the time, it couldn't change the rating. It's now completed the first stage of a new government-ordered review. These hospitals should shut because they're no longer needed, but that was said seven or eight years ago and it hasn't happened. So it's delivering on that promise of providing alternative services where these hospitals are no longer needed and people are discharged because there's somewhere better for them to go. That, that's what has to happen. It makes me quite angry when I'm now told, well, you can't close institutions because there aren't community facilities. At heart, it's actually simply an excuse and it will be trotted out all the time whilst these institutions continue to exist and where people suffer what I, what I regard as the most disgusting treatment. The Department of Health and Social Care told us it's working to ensure more people return home from hospital as soon as their treatment has finished. Since Winterbourne View Hospital closed eight years ago, Anne's son Simon has been cared for and supported in his own home close to where she lives. He's a force of nature. He just, yeah, he just is a force of nature. Uh, and, and I'm proud of him. He, he's an amazing son. Oh my gosh. She dyed her hair. She has, yeah. Oh, ah. she's, she's blonde now, by the way. Is she? <laughs> yeah. She's dyed it a few times <laughs> since she moved. Alex is now out of Walton Hall after a replacement was found for her closer to home. We go in every weekend and in the week two when one of us has a day off. We could literally just pop round now if we wanted to. It's like a little self-contained yeah. bungalow and she loves it. It's also run by Signet. It has an on-site psychiatric team and allows Alex her independence. She walked round and she started crying. And I said, she why was, are you crying? She says, crying. she says, I'm crying because I'm so happy and this place makes my heart sing. And that's that what she it, said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Makes my heart sing. Life for Alex sounds so much better now. But the families of vulnerable adults worry that unless care is genuinely transformed this time, abuse will continue. I'm devastated for anybody it's happening to. Because the pound of a penny is happening to some other people. And it shouldn't be. Here we are, eight years on, still talking about how appalling it is. And it's still going on. She must show all those clips. She must show people. I don't care what you show with me. You must. You must show people.